Well, the New York City Police Department and New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio have been feuding for weeks now. The rank and file complain that they are not getting the respect and support they deserve from the mayor. And the mayor, till this point at least, is standing his ground. All of it flared up following the tragic deaths of two New York City police officers. Hundreds of police officers were first to enter the church in New York for the wake of Officer Rafael Ramos. He was shot along with fellow officer Wen Jian Liu by a gunman who said he was avenging the police killings of unarmed black men. NYPD Police Commissioner Bill Bratton was among those paying their respects. So too was former city mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Current Mayor Bill de Blasio, criticised by police unions for his qualified support of protests against the use of force by officers, put in an appearance toward the end of the week. In a memorial service after the wake, shown on a large screen to those outside the church, one of Ramos's two sons delivered an emotional tribute. My father was a man of character. He was a selfless man. Ed, I'm forever grateful for the sacrifices he made to provide for me and Jaden. Joining us to discuss this contentious relationship between New York's police department and the mayor are businessman, former councilman from the township of Bowbridge in New Jersey, and former New York City police officer Kevin Colligera, a police detective and law enforcement expert, a former police detective, Joseph Blaitler, and of course Jackie Gusta joins us as well. She's sticking around. I, I'm going to play devil's advocate because uh, from what I have heard of this story, I don't quite understand why the rank and file police officers are so angry at the mayor. I think. It just doesn't fit the crime, if there is a crime. Do you concur? Well, what are your thoughts on uh, this? I understand the anger. Um, the NYPD believes that the mayor has turned their back on them, on them, collectively. Um, well, well let, me, let me fill in the blanks. The, the mayor said that the, in the Eric Garner case, and that is the, right. the guy who was uh, chokehold by the police officers and, and unfortunately passed on, uh, that there should have been some sort of an indictment. He thought there was, and we all saw the video, and I think the majority of New Yorkers would agree. Number two, uh, he said that he has counseled his, his son uh, from a mixed race marriage to be careful in encounters with police officers, which I think any father would do with any son, black, white, or an, a, any ethnicity. Why, why is that suddenly so wrong to do, and why are police so upset about this? Because I think it goes back even further than that. De Blasio basically ran on an anti-police platform. When because he, he wanted to stop, stop and frisk. He wanted to stop, stop and frisk. He spent his campaign bashing the New York City Police Department, which... In I, what way? Uh, the stop and frisk. He eliminated the um, detective units that were doing uh, surveillance on mosques, which we just had a conversation about that not too long ago. Mm -hmm. He was against that. He was against the stop and frisk. He made the comments about his son has to, has to be careful around police. That would be the equivalent of me saying to my children, listen, when you're around black people, be careful. Uh, it's the same equivalent to me. He's painting the New York City Police Department with a broad brush. The other issue is he surrounds himself with Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton is a polarizing figure. Um, he has been anti-police his whole life. He has no credibility. And yet, the Blasio surrounds himself with Al Sharpton, brings him to the front of the table when they want to have a debate about policing. Uh, recent picture, de Blasio in the middle with Bill Bratton on his right and Al Sharpton on his left. In the eyes of the police, you're like bringing the enemy into, into the house to tell us what to do. All right, let's stop you there. Kevin, you, you, you've been a New York City police officer, so you know how that mentality works. Is that an insult? I believe it is. I think, first of all, in bringing people like Al Sharpton to the table, I believe there's so many other community organized people that can represent the people in the community better than Al Sharpton. I mean, Al Sharpton brings us back to the Tawana Brawley days, and I just question his credibility altogether and I don't believe he's the right representative to have. If we took the Al Sharpton incident out of this, would there be such outrage? I think there still be, would be some outrage. I think this mayor seems to be having a more difficult time in balancing the politics of the position of being mayor than prior mayors have. Um, I think it's a learning curve for him and he's a little bit behind the curve on it. Jackie, there's no, there's no school for mayors. You learn on the job That's once true. you become mayor. Has he, in his actions and deeds, conveyed uh, a sense of trust? Has he, had, has he done the, the right job? Well, is he learning on the job? Well, first what I've got to say is that I don't think that we should put the people of the city of New York in camps. That we shouldn't say that, yeah, he's anti-cop. And then the protesters should not say things like, what do we want, dead cops? We put ourselves in camps, and that's what's wrong. 
I applaud de Blasio with what he did during these recent protests. Why? Because you look at Ferguson. Ferguson brought in the heavy artillery, the tanks, you know, all of that. And that only inflamed the people, and they had property damage, people were hurt, etc. But what happened in New York, and as a property owner, as a citizen of New York for the last 25 years, we were safe. He let those feelings escape from the protesters, no matter what you think about them, and I am certainly not in the camp with a lot of them. It let all of that escape, and there was no real damage. There were those police that were hurt, the ones that were thrown, they had the garbage cans there were two thrown of them. at them. And you know what? Those people, justice should be brought to them. They were wrong. Right. And that was hate speech when they were marching and saying, you know, what do we want, dead cops? But what would you advise the mayor to do at this point? I think he did a great job in letting the protest escape like that. Yeah, I didn't like them on the FDR drive. They stopped people from going home on the West Side Highway. But that's over with. We did it. The protests now are winding down. And now I think what we do is only give them parameters. Yes, you can only protest well, here or you there. You make a very good point. Part of the, the, the problem with the police officers is they said that the mayor let these protests go on too long. Yes. The mayor is the father of New York City. He's the one that's supposed to set the tone. He's the one that has to get up and tell the people of New York, you know what? New York has one of the best police departments in the world. And I, I mean that sincerely. If you look, it's one of the most diverse. You have black, you have white, you have Chinese, you have uh, Puerto Rican, you have any nationality, including Indian. All right, we're very diverse mm -hmm. in New York. And I think that New York's police department shows that New York can handle it. The fact that they had the protests and there were no incidents, I think it's just a tribute to the way that the police officers handled themselves. I, I would York. agree, but what was the problem with the protest? Well, here's, here's a couple problems with the protest. First of all, I, I disagree with Jackie that Del Blasio gets credit for um, allowing the people to protest. I disagree with that because that's a police decision. Yeah. I give credit to the police what, department. What do you mean it's a police decision? The mayor, the mayor is, the, is the mayor. He doesn't direct operations mm -hmm. in the field. The police department directs those operations. So the credit belongs to the men and women and the leadership of NYPD. That they let them protest they on let the them protest, drive in the Brooklyn And they didn't Bridge bring in heavy artillery. So De Blasio, in my opinion, gets no credit for okay. that. But are, are, do you I believe agree. that Bratton did a good job? Bratton did a very good job. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, if Bill Bratton was to lead the NYPD right now, there'd be a complete mutiny. Because he's the only thing keeping that police department together right now. Because they have no respect for Bill de Blasio. We, we know that. They turn their backs on him because they have no respect for him. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one issue. The other issue is... By the way, even when they were ordered not to do so at the second funeral, right. when Bratton said, do not do that, they still did that. They did it. And, and I support their decision. If that's what they want to do, I they have a right, right to do that. No, I mean, th that was so tasteless. It wasn't about them at the time. And that is analogous to those protesters taking over the it, highways. It wasn't about them and their political gen it, agenda it, it, at the time. It was about them. It was their brothers and sisters in those caskets. It was so about it the was families about of the people in those well, caskets. Listen, they have a First Amendment right to speak out. And if that's the way they want to exercise their right... And when you have rights, you mayor. have responsibilities. Okay, but how about the fact that three days ago, the mayor of New York City says, I refuse to apologize to the New York City Police Department. Right, and the police in turn refuse to apologize to de Blasio. Well, how much of this is politics and how much of this is, is uh, a sincere feeling on behalf of the police department that they've been wrong? How much is it? You know, they're going into contract negotiations. I don't want to be right. so I don't crude think as this, it. I don't think it has anything to do with contract Nothing. negotiations. No. I really don't. You really I don't. I think there's philosophical differences between the mayor and the way the police department's being run and what the people, you know, what the police officers believe. And I believe that they feel they're not being supported by the mayor by not having the mayor send out the right messages to the public. Well, right? what, would, what would you advise the mayor to do? I would advise the mayor to probably sit down with somebody. One of the suggestions I think Pat Lynch, the uh, president of PBA, had said, uh, the governor, you know, Governor Cuomo might be a good person to sit down with. Mm -hmm. They need to have a mediator that they're going to talk it out, maybe work out some of their problems. And, you know, it's, what, what, it's like a marriage. Right now, what's stopping the Blasio from saying, you know what, I want to have a meeting with the unions. Yeah. Come to well, Gracie no, Mansion. Wasn't there one or two meetings he had Today's already? No, no, he had meetings with, um, there was meetings with Bill Bratton. There, were no, there have been no direct meetings, to my understanding, between the mayor and the unions. All but five unions. I think there had no. been one. I think there I had do been not, one. I do not recall hearing but about that. Wednesday. Even if they had one, uh, should there be a series of meetings? There and should, be, should the mayor come out and say, I am sorry? The mayor should come out and say, listen, if I did anything to offend you, I'm sorry. That was not my intent. 
and that could start a dialogue. But by him saying, I'm not apologizing to anybody, it shows that he's just an arrogant person that doesn't want to change. All right, let me hold you there. Before, let's, let's move on to a different topic. Do you think that the, the deaths of these two police officers, which for all intents and purposes were assassinations, yes. had somehow, uh, are somehow connected to the protest and in turn to the decision in Missouri not to indict in that particular case as well? I think it's all tied in. You think it's all connected? Yeah, I do. Um, I also think that we have a problem in this country. I think the problem is that, number one, I have to say this in all earnest, I don't know any police officer or a law enforcement agent that gets up in the morning and says, I want to kill somebody. I don't think there's anybody that even wants to live with that. And I think that when it happens, it's a tragedy. We seem not to understand what the word tragedy means in this country. You have 800,000 law enforcement agents. Mm -hmm. You have 340 million people in the United States. There's tens of thousands of interactions every day between law enforcement and residents or you know, citizens. There has to be at some point those confrontations well, well, isn't, isn't turn it into a training a issue? We get Eric Gardner, uh, Eric Gardner, he's on the ground. You, even you know as a cop, when you were a cop, you sit him up right away. If he says, I can't breathe, you sit him up. What, happens, training what happened to, excuse me, but you're under arrest. Being under arrest is not a negotiation. It's not something that you stand there and negotiate with somebody that's going to be locked up. People have to understand when a police officer says you're under arrest, you go through the process of being handcuffed and you're under arrest. Jackie, did he miscalculate there? No, no, because I spoke to a number of ex-cops and they all said something very different from what the rest of us perceive from looking at that video with Eric Garner that there was no excessive force. So I want to ask you right. two, you do not believe there was excessive force. That's a double-edged sword because the gentleman's not alive. All right, so it's kind but of... But we have it in the video. I think that we have the, the video. word would not be video. excessive force. I think the word I'm going to use is what I said before, tragedy. When you have humans involved in things... But you would take that kind of force if somebody was resisting you. A he bit. was a big man, yeah. number one. Right. right? And, you know, he... I, I didn't... Seem, he didn't seem to me that he was flailing his hands mm -hmm. or being um, offensive, but he wouldn't submit to the fact that he was under arrest. Right. So at what point do you actually go ahead and make the effort where you're going to handcuff the gentleman? No, well, right, well, because that reflects what I had heard from some of these ex-cops. And along with that, they were saying, I was saying, what about him saying, I can't breathe? Yes. And they were laughing. They were saying, if you can't breathe, you can't say it. And, yeah. and somebody said to me, do you know how many times I've heard that? Mm -hmm. well, All right, well, we, I'm sorry, we've run out of time. We've got to leave it here. But this is a really interesting conversation, which I'm sure as the weeks go on, we will continue. Because I think this controversy between the police and the rank and file police officers is yet to be resolved. And we'll see where it goes. As I mentioned, it might be a miscalculation on the mayor's part, but there's no school for mayors. You learn on the job. When Fresh Outlook returns, what's going on with crude oil? And have we hit rock bottom yet? We'll be right back.